direct from Foxborough, Massachusetts, the gem of Norfolk County, and taped at the studios of Foxborough Cable Access. It's Foxborough Central, and here's your host, Bob Hickey. Good evening, Foxborough. I'm Stephen Uden, and I'm guest hosting for Bob Hickey tonight on Foxborough Central because we have some special guests joining us, and we want to thank you for tuning in and making Foxborough the gem that it is here in Norfolk County, Massachusetts, USA. I'm uh, here because Bob has invited me to guest host because we have as guests tonight, Bob Hickey and Rob Canfield. And we are very happy to have them here tonight because we're going to be talking about the rebirth and rejuvenation of the Orpheum Theater here in Foxborough. Thank you very much for having Gentlemen, me. Gentlemen. Thank you so much. It's Thanks nice to you. see you. Saw you Saturday night, and we'll be talking a little bit about Saturday night. But um, this is really a, an honor for me and, and a, a pleasure, and, and I, I love what you're doing. Well, we love what we're doing. Um, we'll talk a little bit about websites and Facebook handles and those sorts of things, but just wanted if you could give me, uh, Bob, a quick overview of what the heck I'm talking about in case people don't know that the Orpheum Theater uptown is, is alive and well. Well, I hope by now people know that the Orpheum Theater is alive and well. We've uh, <laughs> been doing a lot of work out there. Uh, we formed a nonprofit organization called the Foxborough Regional Center for the Performing Arts, Incorporated. Okay. We're a registered 501c3 nonprofit organization here in the Commonwealth. And we have been operating the Orpheum Theater since September 1st of 2017. So as of this taping, a little bit over four months. Wow. I see you've been busy. I went on the website, which um, I think we'll, we'll put on the screen, which is uh, www.orpheum.org um, here in, uh, on the internet. And I looked at your schedule, and thus far, um, your schedule for the Orpheum looks pretty packed right up until March. Well, actually, uh, Rob, who is the program director, Rob Canfield, and, and I, I'm the executive director, right. Bob Hickey, right? Yeah. Now you introduced me and I'm here. I'm sorry, well, <laughs> I am a rookie and uh, you're doing a, a great job, rookie Steve. mistakes hosting no, tonight, in, in I'm fact, sure. uh, we here at Foxborough Cable Access are a, mm -hmm. all volunteer organization, just as the mm -hmm. Orpheum Theater is uh, primarily uh, an all volunteer organization. And uh, we're always looking for good volunteers. Maybe somebody wants to be the host of Foxborough Central. There you go. Are you well, applying for the job? I. Uh, I, I will fill out a form. I'm not sure I'd, I'd oh. pass the background check. Well, Robin uh, I'm an elected official, so best to make so you look very good. Tonight. You never know. <laughs> so you asked a great question. The Orpheum Theater is an iconic theater here. It's, it was built in 1926. The first show uh, was a silent movie back on January 12th, 2027. Oh, I'm cool. sorry, 1927. So the theater's been in operation now for exactly 92 mm -hmm. years, uh, and it, it's been a movie house for the first. Uh, you know, eight decades up talkies. until night, talkies came along in the early 30s. Rudy Valley was the first talkie that appeared there. Wow. Uh, and it was uh, owned by the Perry family. Mr. Perry, of course, also owned the bus line. And so the Orpheum, uh, which was technically started next door in the Union Movie House or the Union House, uh, where the current BP gas station, the old mm -hmm. Getty station, um, it was started in 1912 on the second floor as a 250 seat silent movie house. Then in 1918, Mr. Perry bought the Union House, kept the orphan going, built the current structure, the big pink building. Yeah, uh, as Robert great I art say, deco ish. It, sort it's of very color. art deco ish. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, if you're going to be the big pink elephant in the room, or in this case on the common, you got to embrace it and be who it's we a are. Great so color, yeah. Come visit the pink. We are we are your choral uh, concert hall and uh, all sorts of other type of entertainment uh, opportunities there. So you, you had mentioned that we do. Uh, we had a grand reopening, and uh, what an exciting night that was. was. We was. had 36 Red, Hirsch Gardner, uh, local artist Sophie Sobel mm -hmm. all played, and we were able to uh, you know, create our new chapter. Mm -hmm. Rob Canfield and I have been working very hard to uh, you know, make a new path and to uh, create something that's going to be not only uh, something fun, a good place to go, 
uh, but also an economic driver for the town, right. a destination point, a reason to come downtown, but also our primary purpose, our mission statement, if you will, the reason why we're a nonprofit is to support the local performing arts, mm -hmm. support nonprofit organizations, civic organizations, and create a real home uh, in our community where people can use us for their, uh, either for their arts, for their expressions, or for their fundraisers. And so we want to be that home to many, and uh, so far, Early returns are, and Rob, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but early returns are an overwhelming yes that this is something that's been needed. Uh, there has been a super call for this type of venue, and so many new, neat, uh, exciting things are happening that I don't know if we're going to have enough time to get into all of them on this program, <laughs> well, but we can certainly try. If, if, if I could actually ask our, pro, our programming director here a couple of things. I was looking through the, um, the schedule, and you have everything from... Um, hands-on classes for artists. Mm -hmm. I imagine that's painters or sculptors. I don't right. know where we, we right. can elaborate. You're gonna have plays, community variety shows. Um, you have a food space and maybe even um, uh, an adult beverage opportunity. I'm not, I'm not sure where that is, uh, but you can have a meeting there with food if you're in say a Rotary or right. a, a Cub Scouts or something like that, whatever the, 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 the building can um, accommodate for. Then I looked at your movies. You have everything from uh, Castaway to Stanley Kubrick movies coming, a Chinese New Year festival. Yes. Um, at the ribbon cutting I happen, I happen to be, uh, go, I happen to go to. Um, you talked about having like end of season sports celebrations there mm -hmm. instead of, mm -hmm. you know, somewhere. Uh, well, Jim DeVellis had mentioned that. Jim is the president of our board of directors. We're blessed to have a wonderful uh, supporting cast, people who have uh, strong leadership, and each one has a, uh, a, a special thing that they bring to the table that really makes our community project work. The board's work. big. We have a 20-member board, right. uh, and the, the feeling going into it was that in my role as executive director, I can handle the nuts and bolts. I like doing operations. I'm an operations guy from State Street. That's mm -hmm. my vibe. But I'm not a performing arts person per se. I know what I like. Mm -hmm. I sat in the audience and I love Lion King, and uh, as, as most people do. So I know from a customer standpoint what I like, and I know from an operations standpoint what I think I can bring to the table. But there's so much more that goes into it. There's all the nonprofit organizations, mm -hmm. the civic organizations, the performing arts, the business community. And you can't do a project like this without having the, the scope to be able to bring it all together. And so, uh, you know, the vision from day one, and we've been working on this since what, March of 2017, uh, is really to you know, be all encompassing and to maximize that space. Because the theater's been there since 1927, but it's, it's really a building. Mm -hmm. But we can make something special happen in that building. It's all about the people who Rob, are Rob, how'd you together. come up with the mix of what's currently on the, on the um, schedule right now with these movies and Sure. Other so I, what we've done is, is get a lot of feedback from the community about what they're mm. interested in seeing, what, what kind of things are driving an audience. Okay. Um, we've also, groups have found us because there are groups, uh, whether they're um, artists that are looking for spaces to run classes, whether they are choreographers and dance instructors that are looking oh. for a place to create to create and, and cool. rehearse yeah. and perform, um, whether it's you know uh, two of the local, so both the Taylor and the Igo schools are doing musicals this year. Well, my, my school, I'm, I, I volunteer at the Southeastern Regional Volk Tech just did the Crucible by right. Apanella that there. So right. That was a pretty wonderful. substantial was play so too. Exciting. Right, so there, these places, these these groups are all looking for places to perform. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there are, there's usually not a dearth of, of people that want to perform, but there are sometimes the challenges for the place for them to do it. Um, so when they start to, you know, for years people have passed by this building that hasn't necessarily been as vibrant as it could be or as, as essential to the, to the kind of the fabric of the town as it could be in the past few years, um, and they know that it's open, they've really started um, finding us more than, you know, we've, we did some reach out very early on, we're still continuing to do it, but more and more, we're finding that people are coming to us and saying, we're thinking about, we want to use this, we want to, can we? So it's space, completely, space you're completely approachable, uh, the organization, to at least have a discussion of what you Absolutely. want to do. Absolutely. And, and I think that's a great way of going. I, re I remember when we first started, you know, Bob's answer, or the thing you wanted to put over the door was. <laughs> I was always laughing with your wife, Laura, who's one of the 
phenomenal directors here in Foxborough, works with the children and, and uh, at the school level and mm -hmm. is bringing her product out to our place, uh, which I think is wonderful. Mm -hmm. With the Recreation Department partnership, right. having 101 Dalmatians out there with the Taylor School, uh, Recreation with Aladdin. I mean, mm -hmm. how exciting was it to see yeah, those kids? Yeah, the Canfield class <laughs> plays. I yes. Mean, those of us that have been to them know that well, uh, my daughter they're, was they're, there back in the day. They're and, fabulous mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. and, but what a great environment to have a real stage right. and, a, and a real theater environment for these kids to be exposed to. And you'd mentioned Southeastern folk, Southeastern players, and give all the credit to that wonderful director, uh, Mr. Cross. And uh, Chris, you know, saw that stage and he, you know, em embraced what we had to offer. And his words were, he was so excited to be able to give his high school students the opportunity to perform on a We're real part stage of a district, before right, they a graduate. And, and, for the and we mm -hmm. love that type mm -hmm. of enthusiasm because that's what we want to do. Right. We want to be able to give people that opportunity to be exposed to theater. Uh, and I suppose that's one of the reasons why we're also so excited about, you mentioned the ribbon cutting ceremony, our new name, our new identity of the Marilyn Rodman Performing Arts yeah, Center. Yeah, that was it. And can you develop that a little bit? Because she had a huge gravitational pull to the arts, mm -hmm. not just from this area, but like everywhere. So I learned a lot the other night. Well, you know, so you mentioned the other night our ribbon cutting ceremony, our, re -dedica our dedication, our re-grand opening gala that we had on uh, January 6th. It was a very exciting night. And How many people were there? A couple of hundred. Easy. We had over 280 people there. Yeah, so that's so. about two-thirds or more full. Three, three, Three-fourths full. It was a great night. Yeah. yeah. And so the theater itself has 400 seats. Uh, we yeah. have um, when I mentioned about Mr. Perry, the uh, theater was sold to the Sharon Cinema Group through a couple of transactions, and then they closed it in 1989 after it was a triplex to focus on their property out at the Shaw's Plaza in ah. Sharon. So the same group owned too. There was a codicil on the property when it was purchased by Neil and Linda Colvin in 92 that they couldn't show movies. And so the um, their vision, uh, Neil and Linda, who I've had the pleasure of meeting mm -hmm. and, and they're still um, you know, with us here in, in uh, well, Neil lives in Australia and Linda's in the Berkshires, but um, as far as what we're trying to accomplish, uh, I think it's in keeping with their original vision of performing arts and bringing, you know, a Broadway stage to this link, because there's so many great venues in the area. There's the stadium in Woonsocket, there's the Norwood Theater up in Norwood, yeah. uh, not to mention the whole Boston scene, right. I mean, how tremendous is that? Right here at the intersection of 495 and 95, what a great link between New York, Montreal, Boston, Worcester. Uh, you know, we are so perfectly placed to be able to have this type of stage. And, and it's just exciting what we have know, the opportunity to do. You know what, as, a, as an attendee, it's part of the Foxborough bucolic feel. I mean, it's like you go in there and it's not, it's not bland, it's, it's very real, and I'm sure the actors get into it, but one of the things I just wanted to, to ask you folks to elaborate on a little bit was that it's not just Horatio and, and, and Shakespeare plays, right? I mean, right. there's other things we can do in that, as they say in the industry, space, right? I mean, it's a great space. It is, it's, it's absolutely. So, you know, there's live theater, uh, Straight plays, so dramas, comedies, yeah. uh, musicals, yeah. um, and musicals Bands. from right. So musical theater, children, adults, uh, community, professional, semi-professional um, repertory groups. You know, we'll all be using or are, are in talks to book the to book the space for performances. Mm -hmm. In addition, to live music. Um, you know, we had as as you mentioned, we had Thirty Six Red the other night. We have we have the Oh Nos coming up in a couple of weeks. Uh, we've had some other bands in performing, um, so uh, you know it's a live music space. The uh, the name is escaping me now. I'm um, sorry. Uh, we also have like uh, the Foxborough School of Classical Ballet. It's a dance space, so right. they did the Nutcracker there. We have Cheryl Ward, who is now coming in, and, and um, she had auditions this afternoon for a performance piece that she's putting together. Cheryl um, Woods is going to be doing the. Uh, a, a dance musical right. called Throwback, and we're very excited about that because that's our own production. Uh, Tara Woods, who has uh, so much experience being a dance director uh, out west, is bringing her product mm -hmm. to us, and how exciting is that? We're going to have a dance musical. Well, for people that don't know the space... Hashtag Throwback, by the way. Got to get the whole name right. Throwback. Hashtag Throwback. For, for people that don't know the space and people that might be, like, piqued in their curiosity for this, 
You also have a lot of the equipment and facilities needed to put a show on. You have a yes. huge, beautiful lighting system in there. I'm, I'm not sure the extent of the sound system. It sounded great. Yeah. So that, Can that's you a talk great, about that a little yeah, bit? Yeah, absolutely. Let me, mm -hmm. let me touch on that. So this, when the theater was purchased by Neil and Nicole then in 92, mm -hmm. uh, with the understanding that they we're not going to be showing movies, they really uh, outfitted it with the intent of it being a top quality Broadway, off-Broadway performing arts stage. Okay. So if you think about it, 1992 technology, yes, but it's completely fitted out with a fly system. We have 11 drops. We have nine rollers. We have two winches. Uh, we've got stage doors. You can have the Wicked Witch rise right, up, sink down. Right. You can do anything on our stage that you would want to do as, as far as your creativity. That's the limit of, of what we can do. We have an entire lighting system that can spot, light, grid, anything you like. Uh, 32 channels of sound. We have in-house 16 channels of wireless, eight wireless handhelds. So we and have a board back there. We have a board. We've got Great. the entire. It's programmable. Uh, yes, it's floppy because it's 1993 technology, but you know well, it works. Which brings me it's to my, my next bones. question. Um, I always like to sit in the Orpheum in one of the seats that has been named for someone by a sponsor. Um, are these the type of things the Orpheum could use as sponsors, um, whether it is buying a name on a seat for their, you know, beloved uh, sure. friend or even enhancing equipment or services or even staffing. Somebody's got to pull those pulleys to fly the Wicked Witch of the West <laughs> across the stage, right? So what do you need? Uh, it's a great question. So first of all, let's address the seats. We are very sensitive to the history that the Orpheum is. It's a community resource. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. coming into this, there's not a desire to paint the pink elephant green. It's, it, we are who we are, and we are part of Foxborough. So let's, let's be aware of the history, let's be respectful of the past, and let's be excited about the future. The chairs that are in the first seven rows, they were all dedicated when the theater itself uh, underwent an earlier rebirth. And so mm -hmm. those chairs have historical significance. Yeah, they they're were, beautiful. Then not only are they beautiful, but the dedications are people that we all know. They're yeah. our neighbors, they're our friends, people yeah. from our history. So it's very important that we keep those there. And any future fundraiser will be very uh, respectful we'll of be, that. Will we be doing that in, in the future? You can know, you, you uh, you there's a lot of fundraising opportunities. And you know, the great thing about the Orpheum Rob is that there's plenty of room for volunteers That's to right. come on board, uh, create a fundraiser, and we can all you know, explore that together. So how do we have the volunteers <laughs> contact you? I have a couple of phone numbers and dot, dot, dot coms here, but mm -hmm. what's the best way to get in contact if you want to get involved, you know, in whatever role you can? I'm sure you need people to help with accounting as well as sweeping the stage, right? right. I mean, they're all important and they're all vital roles. They are. Right. Um, so certainly the, the phone numbers are great. Um, so 508-543-ARTS. Um, uh, and that translates to, to 508-543-2787. Yep. Um, you can contact Bob at the Orpheum. So it's Bob H at Orpheum.org. You can contact me. It's Rob C at Orpheum.org. Or there's also Box Office at Orpheum.org. Yeah, I got that. That's pretty prominent on your website right. and as well as the um, Facebook site. I yes. Went to, which mm -hmm. is the Orpheum Theater, three separate words, dash Foxborough. Mm -hmm. With, as we say, without the Ugg, without it's the O-R-O. Right, right. 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 The, reason, the reason for that is the Orpheum has been around for a while, and mm -hmm. there are a couple sites out there that aren't official. The official site has our, uh, our I'm going to call it iconic, our uh, Art Deco Lion, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, who's been our, our new logo, Julie Pritchard with JCR. Yeah, that was uh, a she great has, design. She's also with the Cultural Council, and she... You know, the great thing about this whole project is, and I'm an old Foxborough JC, so mm -hmm. forgive me for saying, but uh, I'm running this like a CD project. You have your ways and means, you have your you know, individual development, you've got your community development. All the pieces that go into a good project is how we're going to have mm -hmm. to create this Foxborough Orpheum Theater as a project for the future. So um, the lion head is our logo, so look on Facebook, find the one yeah, that has the strong, lion. it's strong, it's Art Deco-y, it's... Unique but it, at the same time. It's it's really a I, great our logo, logo is so cool, and with the new branding uh, being the Marilyn Rodman Performing Arts Center, we've kept the strong points of the logo. Uh, and we, we have a monogram with MR. It's there's so many different ways to 
uh, really make that building beautiful. And part of it is going to be the branding. So embrace who we are and, and go forward. We're starting off at such a, a zero point mm -hmm. as far as where we want to go. There's nothing to do but yeah, create but some excitement idling. and go forward. You're rolling, you know. And rolling you know, rolling people, like thunder, yes. Yeah, yeah, people and, have been and, really, you know, really receptive. Yeah, it's been, well, it's been great. If you can help me understand a little bit, how do we thank the Rodman family? We've, we've named it for Marilyn, right? Are they helping us with sponsorship as well? Because they, they certainly are a strong supporter of the arts, right? And uh, so first son on, gave on the a business moving side. speech the other day. Yeah, Craig, right we had the heart. honor of meeting Craig, and he uh, was um, he was so spot on in everything deal. he said. It was and a real deal. I'm going to say that the way to honor the name is to be true to our mission. Mm -hmm. uh, Marilyn Robin, as you heard, Rachel Calabrese, who is the Chair, uh, president of Confit Kids, a local nonprofit organization that provides scholarship money to kids wanting to participate. Um, she was so uh, accurate and, and moving, yeah. and, and she's really the, the one who, who brought this together. Uh, she uh, has a very strong relationship with the Robin Foundation, with the um, Robin Ride for Kids, and her mission is very closely aligned to what our mission is, which is really to do good and to create the opportunity for. Uh, kids to have success uh, through the arts with us, mm -hmm. uh, through participation with her. Um, by making that uh, marriage, if you will, between the Rodman Foundation, the Maryland Rodman Foundation, and us, uh, gives us the opportunity uh, through their being able to give us the funding necessary to finance the purchase. Mm -hmm. um, wow. And, you know, it's not a gift. We are a nonprofit. We do need to raise money. You had mentioned that earlier. Uh, we have memberships. Uh, which are very only affordable. Fifty bucks, and you got a lot for it. I saw that. Well, the we brochure. believe strongly that everybody should have an opportunity to participate in the arts, yeah. and if we make it so pricey that only a few people can join, we don't want to be elitist. We want to be something where everybody can be here, can come to the theater. Our prices are low. We're yeah. not. We're not trying to get everybody's money in one shot. We'd rather you come here, be entertained, be a part of the Orpheum family, uh, be one of us, and. A rising tide will raise all ships, and we're going to be very comfortable knowing that we're doing the right thing and everybody supports us by doing the right thing as well. So fundraising, absolutely. Wow. Uh, being a member is a wonderful thing, mm -hmm. and coming to the shows, that's the biggest way you can support us. That's Fill the, the seats. That's the biggest way. I mean, I think that coming in, you know, and coming and watching something. And you have Junior Mints, and you have good popcorn, right. and right. you, you, know, you have all those popcorn. things. Tell about the junior mints, but I'm sorry, I'm just I just I lost control of myself. Yeah, for a minute. Sorry about that. You and our technical and lighting <gasps> director Bob Seitman, he's they a junior mint fan delicious. also. Yeah. He's available at Bob S at Orpheum.org. If you want an Orpheum website, you have to be named so Robert. We, so we we have less than ten minutes left, so I just wanted to to swing back into something. Mm -hmm. When you mentioned that you have a board of about 20. 20 people. Uh, at first it sounded to me like a club instead of a board. But then I, as, I, as I met everybody up on stage and I introduced them, the walks of life that are up there are a perfect match for this, not just internally in running what your vision is, but for evangelizing it out in the community and beyond our community. We are regional, absolutely. Right? I mean... What, what walks of life did we have on there? We had, you know, musicians, small business owners, uh, fans of the arts. Our board of directors is comprised uh, roughly 33% of business people, 33% of performing arts and art type people, and 33% trades and uh, business. So uh, it, it takes a village to make a, make a child work? Well, it takes a village to make our Orpheum work. And so we need to have those building people. I'm not a construction guy, but I, you know, it's, it's a 92 year old building and it needs yeah. some help. Yeah. Uh, I, I need that support. We have wonderful people who also want to help uh, create that vision that we have a small restaurant, a place where you can have comfort food. Our, our vision right now is a 50-50 vegan uh, a yeah, carnivore I mean, type it, restaurant. I was talking to somebody about Where that. Else and was is like, that it's going to be yummy there yeah, too. Like, it is. The high school kids can go there and eat. You got to put on, on your vision hours. goggles. Right. But once you have those vision yeah. goggles on, anything is possible. Well, like the comedian said, if they can, if they can make a, a chicken flavored tofu, well, I'll eat it. You know, because I'm an omnivore. <laughs>
but I stole a joke. I steal jokes. I'm well, sorry. Well, if you insert bacon in there, then you have me also. Well, um, yeah. I, I, again, the, the membership uh, was, uh, I think, $50. $50, and, and you get, along you with it, you get $50 and, worth of, sort of uh, coupons for the... Uh, for the concession mints. stand, uh, yeah, junior you can get your yeah. junior mints. Junior mints uh, you get 48-hour pre-sale notice for all shows, so you can be first in line. You also have a discount uh, on our performances, so it's really a, a good deal, and it's a great way to be a member and not uh, not break the mm -hmm. bank. And on your board, I also noticed that you have a couple of um, newly elected or uh, currently elected uh, t local and state uh, political people who really love what we're doing here and can help us within their capacity, whatever that is, right? Well, okay, um, Jay Barrows has yeah. been a long time uh, activist from the business community. And He's been president, yeah. president of the Tritown Chamber of Commerce. Uh, as an elected public official, he's done such a wonderful job, particularly as far as Foxborough being able to become an owner of our inter municipal um, sewage treatment plant, which is allowing our town to create opportunities for businesses to locate in the center of town. And without that, there's no way to revitalize the downtown area. But along with that, Paige Duncan, who's not on our board of directors, but is the most wonderful planning director that the town could possibly have hired, she uh, has been working so hard to create the environment where businesses will want to come. They did a study. Uh, to sort of define the, um, the master plan. And the study came to the uh, maybe not unsurprising outcome that there needs to be a destination point, a reason to come to downtown, mm -hmm. which is why mm -hmm. now is the perfect time to revitalize right. the Orpheum and to really create a destination point. Right. And Rob and I, our mission is to have that place open and alive every weekend you should be able to count that there's something going on at the orphan. You may not want to go to the specific item we're doing, but you think, hey, what's you, going on you, at the Maryland Robin you, Performing Arts Center? Right. You, know what check stinks, it out. you know what stinks about this is we're out of time. We've got about two minutes left. You know, you should, you know a good host would have and, know, kept us on track. Um, well, you know... Uh, <laughs> I'll let y'all work I'm, it out later. I'm on my <laughs> permit. I'm on my permit, and I still have driving lessons, okay? Um, what, what, I wanted, what I wanted to do was give you each a quick last word um, and, and thank everybody here in the, in, that you can't see. I wish I could ask people to swing cameras at each other, but they probably won't um, because we've got a lot of nice people helping us out here from Foxborough Cable Access. But, Rob, why don't you give us a few uh, 30 seconds or sure. so, if you can, of what your long view is, and, and, and I think we should do another show and do a walkthrough with some camera footage. I think that'd be delightful. I think it'd be great. A walking tour. So, uh, yeah, I, it's, it's a really exciting time for, mm -hmm. you know, the center of town, for center of Foxborough. It's an exciting time for the Maryland Robin Center of Performing Arts, uh, or Performing Arts Center, excuse me. Um, what we're trying to do is, as Bob said, make it a destination point. Uh, there you know, multiple performance spaces, multiple opportunities for people to come in, take part. I think one of the things that I really loved about getting reinvolved with the Orpheum after having performed on the stage for many, many years uh -huh. um, was when we had an open house for, I think, McGinty Family Fun Day. Um, ah. And there were people that were walking because we were. That's we had right. The, you we, kept the doors open. We had open. the lobbies. We had the lobby open. People come and use the facilities. Yep. Um, but so many families were walking in with young kids, and they said, "We've walked by this building. We've driven by this Ooh, building. Ah, right? We have never been inside yeah. this building. So we're thrilled to actually walk in. Yeah. We can hardly wait to come see something. Yep. We want everybody to take an opportunity to come back inside and the have your club meetings and to there come too. see something and exactly. have a club meeting in the afternoon or the evening. Ms. Well, you Dickey. mentioned club meetings. Uh, you're, you and I both serve on the Foxborough Founders Day Committee. Yeah, we meet there. The uh, municipal, well, not the municipal, but the nonprofit sector um, should always feel as though we are a welcoming home. What about um, corporate stuff? Can you come in privately? Or we have, they... in fact, one of the most fun things that happened over the holidays was Gil Campos and uh, Remax Realty. Okay. Uh, they had Good. their customer appreciation day and we showed Outstanding. Uh, we, we showed Polar Express and uh, Gil was there. I remember reading that in the paper. He That's was right. phenomenal and it was just a wonderful day. So we are a venue that speaks to so many needs from a corporate standpoint, uh, presentations, businesses use us. Mm -hmm. We are a nonprofit organization. The lights need to stay on and we have a very reasonable fee schedule. The important thing is that we are a resource and we want to be the home mm -hmm. to all the groups that, that need a home. So that's why 
the Orpheum is important. That's why we're so excited that we're now the Maryland Robin Performing Arts Center, and we hope to see everybody there. We're going to thank uh, Rob Canfield and, and Bob Hickey for uh, doing so much with the big board. I want to uh, thank Bob and, and the team here at FCA for letting me guest host. I want to thank our viewers at home for watching this. And um, just ask you all to be kind, look out for each other, and count your blessings at home. Thanks a lot, fellas. Have a good night. Thank you so much. All right.